what the business is youtube family we back at it again with another dope documentary and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe right now i'm trying to hit 50k subscribers by next month this is my full-time job and how i support me and my family so please make sure you subscribe to your boy one time let's get to the video today we go into the dirty south with it in the city of new orleans louisiana in the rap game only the strong survive gangster rap is mostly watered down with just rappers trying to make an honest living we have seen it for years a lot of these rappers even some of the greats are just straight music artists and when they rap these hardcore gangster lyrics 90 percent of these artists ain't really living like that the world just seems to always want that one rapper who always keeps it all the way 100 and they raps it seems as if the more gangster they are the more respected they are which can make them have a solid fan base no one likes a faker when it comes to anything in life mainly the rapper that just acts the part are really softer than a baby's bottom it never really works out for these studio gangsters since the beginning of gangsta rap in these new days we've seen rappers that have gone from being sentenced to football numbers over being drug kingpins to rappers who have multiple bodies under their belts rappers like king von from this era that recently passed away from gun violence in november 2020 was the perfect example of a rapper who really lives his raps speaking about his life in the streets of chicago from gang banging to seeing his closest friends be murdered to him open admitting to the world that he has multiple bodies himself it seems like the world is so fascinated from the lifestyle of a real gangster rapper as sad as it sounds they glorify these rappers who really done it all the grimier the better but this hasn't just started with these new age rappers king von was recently called the first serial in rap which isn't the truth this rapper i'm gonna be speaking on today was not just rapping about the rough dark times about his past he was really living it as he was putting it on wax for the world to hear but like i always say this never goes good for these individuals living your raps is the reason why this rapper reaches his untimely demise at a young age this project baby goes by the rap name soldier slim aka magnolia slim from the notorious housing projects in the city of new orleans called the magnolia projects aka the nolia soldier slim's birth name was james adaro tap jr born september 9th 1977 in new orleans louisiana to his parents of james tap senior as his father and linda tap as his mother New Orleans have been murder capital for years in the United States. New Orleans had birthed some of the rap's biggest legends and record groups in the game and most of these rappers have a reputation of really living like that. The city of New Orleans built low income housing projects all around the city starting in the 1940s to provide housing to low income families. The first part of the Magnolia Projects was constructed in 1941. The rent ranged from $7 to $23 per month. The Magnolia, Calliope, Lafitte, and St. Bernard were the first and largest project buildings in the city of New Orleans. The Magnolia Projects had 1,403 housing units divided by streets. The Magnolia Projects had multiple sets all throughout the projects. Magnolia Projects was located in the part of Uptown New Orleans known as Central City within the 11th Ward of the city. Although the projects is within the 11th and 12th Ward, natives label it as the 3rd Ward. However, the 3rd Ward of New Orleans is located in the Central Business District. In the 80s and 90s, conditions of the projects have been neglected and had declined severely during the crack epidemic every projects were sitting on gold mines when it came to selling dope every projects had their own dangerous but lucrative streets they hustled on and in the magnolias that spot was called willow street aka wild willow this busy violent block was very active it made millions but also had high gun violence and bloodshed 
Soldier Slim was from this part of the projects. So at a young age, Soldier Slim had to grow up fast and had to learn the ropes of the streets. At a young age, Soldier Slim started selling dope and even developed a drug addiction with powder and hair on that he would struggle with until his adulthood. He also committed armed robberies at a young age. Slim also began to rap at age 13. Slim dropped out of Cohen Senior High in the 11th grade. Calio Projects burst some of the hottest rappers from the game such as C. Murda, Silk the Shocker, and Master P, the owner of No Limit Records. At the same time, Magnolia Projects also birthed rap legends like Magnolia Shoddy, Turk, Juvenile, and Birdman, the owner of the successful rap group called Cash Money Records. By the early 90s, Soldier Slim was also coming up and rapping at a young age as Magnolia Slim, what he went by before Soldier Slim. Slim would come up rapping in block parties in the projects and sometimes even performing at local venues. He began to create a buzz for himself in the city and would get the attention of legendary producer KLC. He dropped his first album as Magnolia Slim titled Soldier for Life released in 1994 by Hype Enough Records and Parkway Pumpin' Records that was owned by local legendary producer KLC. At the time, New Orleans was the murder capital. Most rappers that hailed from the Magnolia Projects signed with Cash Money Records, but Soldier Slim would miss his chance by being in and out of jail and not being around when the record group was coming up. Soldier Slim would follow KLC and sign to Parkway Pumpin' Records, along with artists like Mystical, 3-9 Posse, Lil Mac, and Mr. Servon. While Slim was coming up in the rap game, he was still a product of his environment, having both feet in the streets. Sometime in 1995, Slim would be arrested for armed robbery. Also in 1995, Slim would drop an EP titled Dark Side. The same year, Slim survived bullets on two different occasions, both while visiting his old stomping grounds, the Magnolia Projects. The first time, he barely survived being shot in the chest and leg. Four months later, he was shot in both arms. Nobody was ever arrested for those shootings, but everyone knows who was responsible for the first shooting. One night while Slim was performing at a high school party, Slim would get into it with a known hitter from Calio Projects named Little Livis. It's not clear why these two would have an issue, but they definitely wasn't feeling each other. They would get into a physical altercation that same night. Sometime after that, Little Livis would get shot in the leg and he would find out that the shots came from Slim. Not sure if he did it himself or sent shooters at Little Livis, but this would start a beef between Slim and Little Livis. Slim and Livis both had multiple friends, but this wouldn't stop the beef between the two. After Livis got shot in the leg, he would get his revenge on Slim and caught Slim slipping, shooting him multiple times. This is when Slim was shot the first time and barely survived. Livis shot Slim in the chest and leg and while Slim was lying on the ground hit, little Livis stood over him and was about to finish him off. But right when he upped the gun to take Slim out, Slim's mother came out yelling over the shooting and Lil Livis was distracted and he just left out the area. If it wasn't for Slim's mother, Lil Livis would have had Slim's life in his hands. This would just make the beef that more real and intense. Slim luckily lived that shooting and around this time Slim got into another beef with a dude from the east that was affiliated with his ops from the dark side beef in a hood called Terra Lane. Slim was paranoid and didn't want this particular person to tell the police or the ops where he was at. So allegedly, Slim hit him up and caught that body. Slim would speak about this situation on a song called My Jacket. And 95, a random die remain and bust the brain. And till I saw spooking out, thought a nigga was trying to kill man. Him and Slim had a fight for some reason, man. So we broke that up and whatnot. So I'm like, come on, come on, Slim, man. That's a little homie. So I'm like, man, that be wild and bucking and shit like that, you hear me? So I'm like, man, it ain't nothing, man. Let that go. 
right after that, not too long after that, shots was fired. Livers get hit in the leg at this time. But yeah, come to find out, Soldier them had sent the shots. Now the beef on with Soldier and one of the little homies out there, yo, man. So Slim used to be on the parkway, the Craig who's the, the producer. So now one of the Livers' little partners wind up getting shot up or whatever. So now it's, you know, it's like, Siri, like, damn, man, they playing with Livers like that? So one particular day, he caught Slim. Yeah, he caught Slim. He Slim up. He stood over Slim, about to knock Slim head off, man. But Slim was with his mom at that time. And, and you know, by God's grace, you know, he, his life got spared that time. Because um, his mom was like, no, don't kill my baby. Don't kill my baby, which took Liva's attention. Later on, Livis would get shot on a live and word in the streets. It was Slim that was behind the murder. And that would end the beef between Slim and his op Livis. Slim's drug addiction would take a toll on him from a young teenager and into his adulthood. There was stories of Slim getting high off powder and hair on and robbing people to feed his addiction. On one night before Slim would perform at a club, he would get picked up by two known street dudes named Fat Melvin and Greg. They would ride around the city getting loaded off powder before Slim's show. Slim was strapped with two 9mm pistols and already had a reputation on robbing people while he was loaded. Fat Melvin was giving Slim a little bit of powder to get loaded off just to keep him happy and cool but this would irritate Slim. When they arrived to the club, Slim would perform all night and he would continue hitting the powder with Fat Melvin and Greg. When the club closed, they all three left together. Slim would ask Melvin for more powder which led to an argument and Slim would pull out his two pistols and rob them for all their work and money. Slim was really on one back in them days. He would do whatever to support his drug habit. Loving dude, nice dude when he ain't getting high. When he getting high, he's, he's a whole different person. What do you know about Slim's drug use? Slim was brutally honest, and he talked about a lot of his struggles. Do you know what he was using? I would hear him say boy a lot, and in New Orleans, boy is heroin. Heroin was the thing, right? <laughs> you know, that was a hard time. When he started rapping, that's when he got on the drugs and he started doing all kind of stuff, you know. I even tried to bring him to a, a, a rehab. I can remember hearing his peers say, well, right now, Slim, you know, he not really focused because he's with that stuff. And then Slim will come back and tell you, oh, well, I bounced back. Later that year, Soldier Slim met Master P outside of a record studio after Slim was trying to rob Master P's producer. In October 1995, Slim would be featured on a No Limit compilation album, Down South Hustlers, Bouncing and Swangin'. This is around the time he would change his name from Magnolia Slim to Soldier Slim. Most of his old label mates from Parkway Pumpin' were on No Limit at this time. Although Slim was rocking with No Limit, he never signed to the record label, which was a smart move. Master P was on top of his game at the time, and No Limit was the biggest record label in the rap game. I mean, Master P was really on top of his game at the time. Soldier Slim would become close friends to C Marta, and they definitely bonded as label mates and good friends. Yeah. What's up? Now what you about to like see is how I do it, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Magnolia bounce, so just slim to the bone. It don't stop. Who's the realest? Me and my dog see it. You understand what I'm saying? No limit. We's the realest, you understand what I'm saying? I don't give a what. Me and my soldier slim, you heard me. We be chilling every day. This ain't no act. You know, we kick it like this for real. So when we make moves, we make moves together. We hang together for real, you heard me? We kick it at the house, at the crib. We go from the Cali, we go in the Magnolia, we go anywhere, you know. We bump each other, you know, we for real in this game. This ain't no motherfucking game. We do our dirt together, you see what I'm saying? That's just how we roll, dog. All this is me. I got all this young isolation.
Jazz and Left Soul is right here, you understand what I'm saying? Slim dropped his first album with No Limit Records called Give It To Him Raw in May 1998, which debuted at number 13 on the Billboard Top 200. Later on, this album went to be certified gold. Later that same year, Slim would get arrested and charged for armed robbery. It was like no matter what, if he was become successful in the rap game, he couldn't let the streets go. He was on the fence with the industry and in the streets. Just like they always say, you can take the rapper out the hood, but you can never take the hood out the rapper. There was even stories that Slim would get really high on Heron and would go rob people. He wasn't just rapping about robbing and doing drugs. He was actually doing it while his life was improving for the better. This would interrupt his success with music and while his label mates would go off, to shine and tour, he would be locked up doing prison time for armed robbery back in 1995. After doing three years in prison, Slim would be released from prison in early 2001. Right after being released from prison, he would go straight to work on an album. He dropped his second No Limit album, The Streets Made Me, in July 2001. This album didn't do as good as his first album with the label due to his incarceration for the last three years. Slim started having double thoughts about being with the label and felt as if Master P owed him more than he was receiving at the time. A lot of his label mates that were with No Limit before he went to prison left the label due to money problems. Slim and Master P didn't come to an agreement and that would be the end of No Limit Records with Slim. Slim would drop a couple disses towards Master P. But see me, I'ma keep it real. P wasn't up in no mail. So far, Jack Clown. I'm gonna own about my business. That's why we don't f around. After leaving No Limit, he would start up his own independent label, Cutthroat Committee Records, signing a couple artists. Slim was starting to build his label to the top. He dropped his first album from the record label called Years Later, which did pretty good on sales independently. He dropped a couple projects with BG. He knew BG since first grade, so they had a close friendship together. BG introduced Koch Records to Soldier Slim, and Slim would sign a distribution deal for 300K, only with one album called Years Later, Months After, which was basically a re-release of his album Years Later. Slim had money issues with Koch Records, and he never did another album with them again. Slim was making big moves on his own because he was the CEO of his own record label. He was making his own moves as a boss and had control of his own career. In 2003, Slim would collab with Juvenile and made the platinum single hit song Slow Motion, which was originally Slim's song, but he ended up giving it to Juvenile. This song was going to be the hit single on Juvenile's album, Juve the Great. The song was getting very popular in the South, but once it officially came out on Juvie's album, it was definitely going to be a big hit. Even though Slim was having major success, he still would be active in them streets. He would still pop up at his projects even though he was shot there two different times. Slim had his own shooter that handled some of his dirt named Be Stupid. He was arrested 14 times before he even turned 15 years old. He was charged for murder at the age 16. The police also tied him to murders in Houston, Texas and even more murders back in New Orleans. Be Stupid is a known shooter from Magnolia Projects that had multiple bodies and even beat the case on three different bodies. He was finally pinned for a body but was only charged for manslaughter. Later in the story, we will come back to Be Stupid. Slim understand that you're a killer automatically because this was, look what you offer. You offer of Willow Street. Be Stupid is off of Willow Street. Be Stupid was Soldier Slim's protege and his Magnolia Project youngin. Be Stupid was from a gang that was created by an OG named Dooney called the Dooney Boys. The Dooney Boys was a small clique full of young hitters. Like Slim could basically send Stupid to do anything. Cause he had a genuine love for Stupid and he knew what it's like to be in his position. Slim would start traveling to places like LA and even meeting up with G-Unit. Kicking it with them hard and even had plans on signing with G-Unit. Slim was on top of his game and he was even dating the music icon Macy Gray. Slim had so many opportunities at this time, he was working hard and filmed a music video to a song from his album called Love Me or Love Me Not, which he had plans of making a single. 
he was just finally about to blow big into the industry. At this time, Juvie hasn't dropped a single slow motion just yet. Once that song hit the world and reached its success, Slim was gonna blow big into the rap game, especially after making moves with G-Unit, which was the biggest rap group at the time. It seemed as if Soldier Slim had the world in his hands. This was a dream come true for Slim, but this struggle and success story would all come to a sudden end. This is where the story turns into a tragic ending. On November 26, 2003, Soldier Slim was shot multiple times in front of his mother's home he had just bought for her. Word on the streets is the shooter followed Slim from the store to his mother's house. Once Slim jumped out of his truck walking to the house, the assailant wearing all black ran up to Slim shooting him once in the chest. While Slim was on the floor shot, the assailant stood over his body finishing him off with three shots to the face. Slim was shot a total of four times. By the time Slim's family rushed to the scene, he'd already died succumbed to his injuries. Allegedly, a man named Jarrell Smith aka Jigga took Slim's jewelry off his dying body. Jigga is from the 7th Ward of New Orleans. Jigga had multiple bodies and they called him a hitman. It was said he even took out four people the same time. There was rumors that Jigga and a man named Stephen Kennedy were the shooters of Soldier Slim and they were paid 10k for the hit. Police was trying to pin the murder on Jigga and Stephen Kennedy but it didn't work out and the whole case fell apart. Stephen Kennedy ended up being unalive. Soldier Slim's shooter B Stupid that we talked about earlier was allegedly one of the shooters that took out Stephen Kennedy but he would beat the case. That was one of the three murder cases that B Stupid beat. In August 2011, Jarrell Smith aka Jigga was also found dead. Soldier Slim's murder hurt the whole city of New Orleans so much. Slim was the biggest controversial, confusing, painful hit in New Orleans history till this day. Even though he had many enemies, he also had a lot of love from all over the city. Soldier Slim was the face of the city and culture of New Orleans. The city wanted answers who was responsible for the assassination of Soldier Slim. There are multiple theories of his death, one being that the rapper and CEO of No Limit Records Master P had put money on Slim's head over Slim dissing him and threatening his family on the diss track, You Gonna Feel Me. To break down the story is that Master P allegedly put money on Slim's head over their beef. Slim was having a busy day running errands going back and forth from his mother's house and to the store trying to get ready for the night because he had a show coming up. Jigga and Stephen Kennedy aka SK were down the block from his mother's house and were watching Slim all day and they were scoping him for hours. Slim had just received his new music video Love Me or Love Me Not. Jigga and SK were just waiting for the perfect time. Slim was all over the place trying to get ready for the show. He ran to the store real quick and when he came back to the house he jumped out of his truck while it was still running because he was going to be quick and jump back in. When he hopped out of the truck, he left his gun in the car. Right when he bounced out, heading to the house, Jigga and SK made their move on Slim, taking him out. Soldier Slim's sister made videos claiming that Master P put a hit out on her brother Slim. This had the whole world confused since it was out of nowhere years later after Slim's death. She would go on the internet with these accusations. But soon after, Slim's son Lil Slim would go on interviews and deny that Master P had anything to do with the murder of his father. Another theory is, people also believe that the loved ones of someone that Slim robbed and unalive have gotten back at Slim that day unaliving him. Rumor has it that Slim was messing with a dope dealer's girl. Slim would do his homework on this particular someone and would allegedly rob and unalive him. But this hustler was a big dog in the game and someone he was close to was also a big dope dealer in the game. Supposedly, this other big dog put 10k on Slim's head and got him unalived. Slim supposedly spoke on the situation on a song called Slim Pimpin', If It's Beef, and Booing Up. At the end of the day, people like us looking at the story from a distance will never really know the truth. For all we know, it could have been revenge from his old beef with the hitter Lil Livis. We will never really know. 
someone with allegedly a couple bodies and that robbed multiple people can create a lot of hatred. It will be really hard to put a finger on it since it's possible that multiple people can be responsible for what had happened to Slim. Slim passed away at age 26 years old and left behind two sons. Slim never got to see his own video for the song Love Me Love Me Not. It was just filmed less than two weeks before his murder. Slim also never got to see how successful the song he gave Juvie, Slow Motion. When Juvie dropped his album Juve the Great in December 2003, the hit single Slow Motion featuring Soldier Slim blew up worldwide. The song that was originally Soldier Slim's song was the number one hit on the US Billboard Hot 100. It was both Juvie and Slim's first and only number one hit. If Slim was alive to see this hit success, he would have been the biggest thing out of New Orleans. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans bad and it really destroyed Magnolia Projects. In 2008, the Magnolia Projects and surrounding projects were demolished. They built a school, businesses, and a community called Harmony Oaks in 2011. It looks as if the neighborhood was gentrified. Until this day, the murder remains a mystery and New Orleans is still one of the state's murder capital. As of the two alleged people who took out Soldier Slim, both had a horrific ending. Jigga got took out by someone from his own hood for unknown reasons, and SK got took out by Jerome Hampton, aka Man Man, in Houston, Texas. Man Man would revenge for Soldier Slim. Be Stupid was with Man Man when this allegedly happened. Man Man was driving around with rapper Magnolia Shorty in December 20th, 2010, a few days before Christmas in the City 9th Ward. They had stopped at Magnolia Shorty's apartment to pick up something before traveling to Miami. As they were leaving the apartment, they were both shot at in broad daylight in a vehicle by multiple men. Even one of the gunmen jumped on top of their vehicle shooting downwards through the top of the vehicle. Magnolia Shorty and Man Man both lost their lives that day. And for B Stupid, he's still alive doing time in prison. Involved in the foolishness, level. I'm trying to tell you what's happening right now. You get involved with the foolish, you might go through that thing you can't handle. How you doing? Yeah, I'm real, so man. <laughs> okay then, baby. How nice to meet you. Yeah. For sure, check it out. Hey, I'm letting show you five or four. Don't you slip. Check it out. Will affect me in a wild man booty right now. Will I know you right now, you heard me? You understand? Straight up out the know you. Then we got step up. You that. Straight up out the know you. You know what I'm talking about? He used to be rocking with Bill. All this shit is me. I got all this young isolation. LA. This is where the real at. This is the real Magnolia right here. Yeah, what you see on TV and what you be seeing with them other cats be doing, it ain't Magnolia. When I started, I started back in 49, like, uh, about 91. And 91 started back in 49, you know what I'm saying? Magnolia for life, you know how we roll. Two years old, fuck you. The left soul is right here, you know what I'm saying? I'm Magnolia. I'm sorry, partner. Rest in peace, Soldier Slim. I'm going to end the story right there. Sorry I had to remake this whole thing and drop this documentary for the second time. Some hater YouTuber got my original video taken down for a false claim of copyright. At least I was able to correct some few things that I got wrong on the first video. Thank you to all my supporters who showed me support. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 50k subscribers by next month. Let me know who y'all want me to do next, and until next time, I'm out.